Coming up on this week's episode of Theme Park Worldwide, the show, Universal Orlando have announced the closure of one of its major roller coasters. I'll be talking about all the details and sharing my thoughts on what's to come for the site. Along with that, Disneyland in California have reopened the attractions around the Rivers of America. I'll be sharing some images and, of course, talking about what I think about this exciting changes at the park. Along with that, I've also got news from Holiday Park in Germany as they announce a brand new indoor themed area for 2018. I'm Sean Sandbrook, this is Theme Park Worldwide The Show, and that means it's time to cue those titles. Welcome to this week's episode of the show. Now before I talk about what we've been up to over the past week, along with what's to come on the channel, I just wanted to mention the horrible incident what took place this week over at the Ohio State Fair in the USA. Uh, there was a terrible incident what took place where someone was killed and there was other injuries on a KMG afterburner at the Ohio State Fair. I just want to say that my thoughts and everyone else at Theme Park Worldwide's thoughts are with everyone that's been involved or affected by this terrible incident. It's a shame to see that we've had so many incidents take place especially over the past year and I think with social media and the news really focusing on this at the moment every little thing is out there uh, especially here in the UK uh, but yeah it's an awful incident what took place and we don't know the full details but there's been some awful videos and images of this accident what happened I just want to say that my thoughts are with everyone that's involved uh, with this incident uh, moving on from that then in terms of the channel over the past week we've had quite a few new videos go online our Europa Park day one and day two vlogs are now online uh, make sure you check those out really good time me and Liad out there and um, we've still got an Alton Towers vlog to come this week and Holiday Park Germany as well from our first ever visit. Uh, along with that another update on Secret Weapon Ace at Alton Towers that's gone online and a couple of other little videos in there as well uh, that I hope you've enjoyed. So much to look forward to on the channel this week. Like I say new vlogs from Alton Towers, Holiday Park, we, me and Alex have filmed a reflections video talking all about the Asia trip and of course we've got Oakwood coming up as well. Uh, now we went over the weekend, we went to Blackpool on Saturday and Southport on Sunday uh, where unfortunately I didn't actually film any videos over the weekend which I'll talk to you about now. Uh, so on Saturday we went to Pleasure Beach and the park was really really busy. Uh, they also ended up in us being a big group of us at the park that day. That much so that we didn't really manage to get that many rides done at all. It was that busy talking to lots of different people and all that kind of stuff that I just didn't film a vlog on Saturday. Uh, so do apologise I was hoping to film one uh, but I haven't done it. It wasn't the best day I've ever had at Pleasure Beach to be honest. It was that busy and there was so much going on and that I didn't film a vlog. However, we did still have a good day. It was nice to see people. Uh, not really much was happening with Icon either. Uh, not really much to report on. But I did still put some updates on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Uh, so make sure you look back through those to have a little look at the latest from the park. Uh, Sunday we went to Southport Pleasureland. I thought, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to film a vlog. Uh, we get there and yeah, there was quite a few rides closed. Uh, the ghost train was shut. Wildcat was closed. Apparently that's going to be shut now for the foreseeable. I couldn't remember a staff that I spoke to. Uh, ship was closed, a few other rides, the coaster what was shut last year, uh, that looping coaster, that's still closed and we didn't have a very good day at all in there, in fact we were in the park for I'd probably say less than an hour, we did a few little rides and thought you know what it really isn't worth getting any footage inside here today. And so yeah, overall not a very successful weekend for videos, unfortunately, but luckily we've still got some really good stuff to look forward to in the next few weeks. Like I say, Oakwood's coming up this weekend, and we'll have a vlog from there. The following weekend it is our event at Chessington World of Adventures, where it is the chance for you guys to come and join us for a day at Chessington, and it's gonna be really good. Like I say, if you wanna come and join us for a day at a theme park, come to one of our events, because that is the time, the opportunity for you guys to come and join us for a day out. Uh, on the Sunday as well, uh, we're going to be sharing live updates from Portland's Park. Uh, that's not an event, that is just our day out, uh, where we're going to be going and filming a video, so make sure you do check that out when it goes online on the channel, and of course we will be sharing live updates. Uh, yeah, if you want to come and meet us, Saturday at Chessington World of Adventures, uh, a week this Saturday, it's going to be a really good day, a really good event at the park. Uh, yeah, so quite a bit's happened this week, and quite a lot to look forward to on Theme Park Worldwide. There's also been some really good theme park news this week. We're going to share with you now in News Off The Rails. Wow. 
Now the first thing I'm going to talk about this week is the closure of Dragon Challenge at Universal Arms of Adventure. Now this news was announced just after I finished filming last week's episode, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to just have to talk about it next week. Uh, so here we are then. Uh, the last chance to ride will be September the 4th, 2017, and the route will be closed off to allow the demolition to begin from September the 5th. That is just over a month away, not long at all. Uh, the ride used to be known as Dueling Dragons, and owned alongside the rest of the park in 1999. A little bit about the coasters then, uh, two B&M inverted coasters, it was known as Dueling Dragons from 1999 until 2010 where it opened alongside the Wisdom World of Harry Potter uh, as Dragon Challenge. Now we did lose quite a bit of theme in here, there's a few other bits added but mostly things were taken away with this and it was such a shame. Uh, the entrance looked great, it was all part of like the Merlin Woods themed area and you had like the two dragons out the front to like massive dragon statues, fire effects, it looked amazing. There's probably a lot of you out there who did get to see it. So if you did, comment down below. Uh, I love seeing what you guys have been up to. So make sure you let me know what you used to think to the original uh, Dueling Dragons. Uh, but yes, 2010, Hogsmeade opened as part of the Wisdom World of Harry Potter and it did continue to duel at this point. Uh, now there was five inversions on either side of the ride. So you're actually losing 10 inversions inside this park. It's quite a lot for a park to be losing really. Uh, now since 2011, the ride has not jeweled uh, due to an incident what took place on there, a horrible incident took place. Uh, so the park decided, right, that's it, we're going to run them completely as separate coasters. So it's a shame that they did have to do that, but obviously safety first, safety came into play with that one, and it ended up being uh, two separate ride so to speak where they just run uh, on their own obviously it was two coasters but we're losing from the park but what are we going to see here's a little look at the details of what we've got so far uh, what its replacement is going to be uh, so this all new thrill ride will take you deeper into jk rowling's wisdom world where you'll encounter some of your favorite characters and creatures it'll be unlike anything that universal has ever built before and will be fun for the entire family that's the key. We know it's going to be a big new roller coaster, but it's fun for the family. Uh, now, the new attraction will be one of the most highly themed coaster experiences uh, that they've ever created and combine a new level of storytelling with an action packed adventure and a few surprises along the way. Uh, the award winning Universal Creative Team is once again collaborating with Warner Brothers and the production design team from Harry Potter Films uh, to bring this new experience to life. That's like the press release that went out on their social media and the website last week when this was announced. Me personally, what do I think it's going to be? I mean, you've got to think what we've already got Harry Potter-wise at the park. Of course, you've got Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, which is a brilliant attraction, like a robo-arm, uh, what moves round, a combination of great theming and screens. And then over in Universal Studios, over in Diagon Alley, uh, of course, you've got Gringotts in there, which is good. I, I still prefer Forbidden Journey by a long way, but Gringotts, that's more of a thrill ride, so to speak. With this one, I think we're going to see something along the lines of maybe Arthur at Europa Park, some sort of ride system like that a family ride, maybe a powered coaster, uh, something like that I think would work great. I mean, you've got to imagine that Arthur style ride coaster, uh, ride system, sorry, with all the Harry Potter theming, I think it would look great. And that's personally what I think we could be seeing, something like that. I'm not saying it will be directly that, but something along those lines, a family coaster wise. Uh, if not, maybe we could be seeing something like an interim freefall coaster, like 13, something like that. But it would be very interesting to see what they get. I'd love to see them though with that sort of ride system. But you've got to think, how would like, the, the, the public take it so to speak two massive coasters with 10 inversions in total there uh, being replaced by something uh, like that it'd be quite interesting to see uh, but yeah my thoughts on it I was never a big fan really of Dragon Challenge I mean I think if I'd have rode the original Dueling Dragons I'd have loved it and the fact that you could be on the front row especially going up into them vehicle loops I would have loved to have seen it and I've watched many POVs and many videos of it and it did look great uh, but overall in terms of the coasters some of the worst B&M coasters have actually been on in my opinion I didn't enjoy them that much at all and there's not really a lot of theming around the ride you can see all the warehouses all underneath and around I just didn't really like it that much I've never been a big fan since the first one on them in 2014 but like I say if I saw them how they were originally I think I'd have really liked it because uh, that was the whole idea behind that ride for them to duel and I know they had to change that uh, because of safety uh, but it is a shame that I never got to experience that uh, when I did I'll keep you up to date with what news we get here uh, from Universal when we announce uh, the new details on this ride
did. Now, ever since I first went to Disneyland in California in 2015, I've followed every single little update to that park. And as most of them have done some very interesting things over the past few years, such as over in California Adventure, uh, changing Tower of Terror into Guardians of the Galaxy. They've announced some interesting changes to Paradise Pier, which I'm not too sure on at all. Uh, and also Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, putting in a Star Wars themed land into the original Disney park. It's something that people have been very interested in, controversial decisions. And to be honest, I was on the those people when they announced Star Wars Land that I thought you know what is this really the right move for the park however uh, now this has reopened last Saturday four of the classic Disneyland attractions have reopened after some minor adjustments and let's just say it looks like an improvement uh, so basically we've got the Disneyland Railroad uh, the Mark Twain Riverboat the Sailing Ship Columbia uh, David Crockett Explorer Canoes all closed in January 2016 me and Alex were actually there on the last day of those attractions and it was a really sad day thinking it's never going to be the same again now it looks like they've enhanced the experience so much uh, yes the rivers of America is a little bit shorter uh, see so the rides on there aren't as long but what they've done especially the Disneyland Railroad it looks amazing you've got all your classic scenes like the Indian scenes and all that around the back which has all been kept and sort of made even better, so to speak. Loads of rock work, there's five new waterfalls at the back, there's a trestle bridge, uh, you've now got the little entrances which are gonna lead into Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. It all looks great. I'm showing you some images along the side. There's also some fantastic videos that have gone up on YouTube over the past few days, uh, so check those out on some of the other channels. And it does look really good what they've done, really impressive. Uh, now this area is all now complete, and obviously they've put all planting in at the back there, which is hopefully gonna hide Star Star Wars land from the rest of Frontierland so it doesn't really take away from that feel that the Rivers of America has. I love the Rivers of America, it's always been one of my favourites at any Disney park and I can't wait to see it all in person. But I must say what they've done with the train and it goes around the north end of the river and for the first ever time a Disneyland train actually has a left turn in it. It's always been round that way, so it's always gone round clockwise, uh, clockwise and then clockwise, clockwise and then when it's come round it's never actually turned left. Now it makes a left turn, it curves round, the layout looks great, the views over the Rivers of America look gorgeous, and I can't wait to finally get over there and see it at some point. Uh, moving on then from that to the final bit of news this week, and that is from Holiday Park in Germany, where they revealed this concept art for something brand new. I mean, we were at Holiday Park for the first ever time a couple of weeks ago, we went with Joe and Ruby, had an amazing day, and the vlog will be up in the next couple of days on the channel. Uh, but yeah, Holiday Park will add a big new indoor area named Heideland uh, for 2018. Now, so I'll show you some images at the side, and from these you can see that the theming actually looks really good. Uh, what we've got here, similar to the Heidi the Ride, really, uh, which is just over at Plops of Land Pan. Uh, over there, you've got like all the mountains and stuff, what they're putting in the background. It's going to be a big warehouse with all these rides in, effectively. It will include a family coaster from Ziera. Uh, which looks good. As well as the coasters, there'll be six other attractions. It's going to be like a ball pit, a play area, uh, two carousels, a giant slide. There's also going to be a 500-seat theatre, and the investment will cost a total of 8 million euros, and they hope it will help Holiday Park um, push towards an all-year-round opening, which is really good to see. I mean, this looks great, and you can't really make out loads in the concept art, but you can just see that it's going to be very well-themed, and I'm sure with what they've done already to the park, and this is going to work great. I mean, I absolutely loved the queue line for Skyscreen when we was there the other week, and you'll see that in the vlog. It's effectively like a scare maze with animatronics in the queue line, and it does look really, really good. So, yeah, I can't wait to see this improvement. A uh, new addition, which is going to be over at Holiday Park in Germany, opening in 2018. It's now time for Name That Coaster. You like a So after lots of exciting news in the theme park industry this week, let's move on to Name That Coaster. Now last week it was from a Disney park and quite a few people did guess that it was the lift hill from Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. But the question is, which Disney park was it from? It was actually from our closest here in the UK, of course, Disneyland Paris. Uh, a really beautiful park and in my opinion, the best version of Big Thunder Mountain. It really is stunning. Uh, the fact it passes under the water and then onto the mountain and then back underneath to the station. It's a really impressive ride. So much thought went into that for when it opened back in 1992. It's also most recently last year went through all sorts of refurbishments and reopened earlier this year uh, with the new explosive finale. It looks great what they've done. And yes, Big Thunder Mountain at Disneyland Paris uh, for last week's. It's now time for another one. Remember, it is just a fun. And make sure you share your comments with what you think it is down below. Here we go. <laughs> I 
I stopped the audio clip. Quite a long one then this week. Again, it's another relatively easy one for you guys to get out there. I did try doing some hard ones, but I think people were really struggling. And like I say, in a couple of weeks, we'll look at maybe doing some water rides, dark rides, flat rides, and all that kind of stuff. So make sure you stay tuned uh, for that one. Remember, it's just for fun, and make sure you comment down below. So welcome to Merch Paradise, where this week I'm going to show you an item from my local park, which is of course Alton Towers. Now Oblivion is the park's dive coaster, it was the original B&M dive coaster, world's first when it opened, and I'm going to share this bit of merchandise that I actually bought in 2008. Now obviously Oblivion was 10 years old in 2008, and here we go, I've got this little magnet. Uh, this was celebrating the ride's 10th birthday, it just says down the bottom there, 1998 to 2008, limited edition magnet up the top there, just above the logo. I thought I'll buy that one, it's a nice commemorative piece to have here at the World of Theme Parks but obviously next year it'll be 10 years since I bought this meaning that Oblivion it will actually be 20 years old 20 years of having the B&M dive coaster and you look at how far that concept's gone in terms of there being flawless trains on other ones and a lot taller, the likes of Shikro and Griffin and wow there's been so many builds especially across Europe as well we've had our fair few and we just thought I'd share that nice little old item to get there from Alton Towers I've got so much from Alton Towers now it's like own mini Alton Towers archives really uh, but yeah it was my part that I loved so much as a kid the one that I visited so much and the one to thank for theme park worldwide even existing questions 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 everywhere so welcome to question time where this week I've got four different questions sent in by the viewers of Theme Park Worldwide. So let's have a little look at what you guys want answering this week. The first question is coming from Ryan who has asked, do I think Chessington will remove Vampire for a new attraction in the near future? Do I think it's going to happen in the near future? No. But in the distant future, maybe so. Maybe in the 10 year plan. I don't think we're going to see anything happen with the site in the next maybe three or four years. But potentially six, seven years down the line, we might see something go in. I mean, plan out the and plan permission has always been something what Chesterton has struggled with. So putting anything down that end again, would they be able to build anything of that scale, a massive coaster? Uh, we'll have to see what happens with this one. Uh, but yeah, would I like to see something replace Vampire? Maybe so, depending on what it was. But it is a classic attraction at the park. I did say a couple of years ago that I thought it was getting a bit old and a bit jolty. But since then, I think they've done a few improvements to it. And you know what? They've painted things up down there. Transylvania down that bottom end, uh, which is now in the Wild Woods. It does look quite nice what they've done with it so yeah hopefully there's still quite a few more years left in Vampire a uh, question now from Matt who was asked if I could make my own themed attraction what would I have in it and what would it be I've always loved Wild West theming like Frontierland at the Disney Parks Far West at Port Ventura I've always loved that style of theme uh, but I'd love to do like a massive water coaster theme to that like a like a sort of mill style theme a bit like Silver River Fl Flume how it's got like, the water wheel and stuff but I have it all as a Mack water coaster I think it'll look great and I'd love to build one inside Planet Coaster if we get water coasters at some point so that's what big shout out to Frontier for that one come on let's have some water coasters uh, but yeah I love Planet Coaster and on that note they will definitely 100% be Planet Coaster coming this week I know I've said it for a while uh, but I've just not had time but I have filmed an episode it's uploading this week and it's going on in the next few days I promise you it is coming don't worry uh, moving on then to the third question from Jonathan what are my thoughts on Toy Story Land at Hollywood Studios you know what this looks great and I think it'll be one of the best things to open at the parks next year 2018 it's a Mac Mega coaster effectively it might be more of a family version but it looks great it's a double launch and I can't wait to see it in the park all the theming around it some head choppers some near misses it looks really nice with what they're doing with it also there's going to be some theme restaurants and of course uh, when Toy St uh, when Star Wars Land sorry opens in 2019 you'll have access straight round into that as well so all change at Hollywood Studios at Walt Disney World but I look forward to seeing it a long needed coaster for that park I mean what you got in there rock and roller coaster and that is it coaster so it'd be nice to see a big new high throughput ride from Mac at the park. Bring it on, that's all I can say. Uh, the fourth and final question then is from Rachel. Do I have any tips for first timers to California? Well, my advice to you is don't miss anything over there. I mean, you've got Disneyland and Disney California Adventure, Knott's Berry Farm, Universal Studios, and of course, Six Flags Magic Mountain. They're all very, very close. Well, I say very close, within about an hour and a bit of each other. Don't miss any of those parks, they're great. Magic Mountain's got the coasters, Knott's Berry Farm has got the heritage and the coasters, and of course, Disneyland has got all of that. It's got the old rides, 
got the heritage and of course the coasters and just the fact that it's Disney. It was the original one from 1955 and it's got such a nice charm to it. You can really feel Walt's presence inside that park. So enjoy it. Get there early, put your tickets online in advance and also watch some of the vlogs that we did from 2015 uh, where you get to see those parks at first hand and, and just get to see it all and get a feel for it before you go and then you'll really be able to make the most of your trip. Have a great time, Rachel. Uh, also, if you've got any questions that you want to ask, keep them coming in to us here at the show. Just send them in over on Instagram via private message or on the Theme Park Worldwide Facebook page, also via private message. So it is time for a bumper TPW showcase. We keep getting more items sent in this year than ever before, so keep them coming in to us here at the show via Facebook and Instagram. Firstly then this week we've got Carl with a Mumbo Jumbo on-ride photo. Thanks for sending that in there, Carl. We then got John with a Logger's Leap on-ride photo phone case. Loving that one. Jensen then up next with a stealth on-ride photo. Hope you had a good launch there. We then got Asa Thomas who had a photo there with me. So thank you very much for sending that one in. We've no one got Liam there as well, who also had a photo. Great to meet you. And also Luca there as well, with a photo there with me. Moving on then from those, we've got Milka and Farheen with a 13 on ride photo. So thank you very much for sending that one in to us here at the show. Hope you had a good ride on 13. Then got Darley with a photo outside Anubis. Hope you had a good time there. Looks like you enjoyed Plops of Land. Moving on, we've got Michael with a photo with myself and Alex. So thanks for sending that one in to the show. Struggling my voice a bit, but I'm trying my best. Uh, then got Zoe with a Star Wars Hyperspace Mountain on ride photo. Thanks for sending that one in. Of course, we're going to be at Disneyland Paris in November to film some vlogs and, of course, share plenty of updates as well. Next up, we've got Ella who had a photo here with me. Great to meet you. Uh, next up, we've got Ellie with a photo with Alex. I hope you enjoyed meeting the milkman. We then got Paul and Ronnie who had a photo there with me. Thanks for sending that one in. And then got Isaac, who also had a photo there with me, so thanks for sending that one in. We then got a photo of Andrea, who had a photo with myself and also with Lee and Alex as well, so thanks for sending that one in, I hope you enjoyed meeting us all. We then got Doug with a chap ass on ride photo, what a lovely family they are, it looks like you're having a great time out there on your trip, I'm so jealous that you're going to spend so many days at Europa Park, uh, but here they are at Fantasia Land on chap ass, uh, so thanks for sending that one in and enjoy the rest of your holiday. We then got Morgan, who had a photo there with myself. Stuart had a picture here with Lee. We then got Heather, who had a photo with me as well. Moving on from those, we then got Louie with a merchandise collection, so thanks for sending that one in. Moving on from Louie, we've got Jenny with a t-shirt collection. And then finally, we've got Ben with a selection of merchandise. Thanks for sending in all your photos, whether they're on-ride photos, off-ride merchandise. Keep them all coming in for next week's episode. We've also got lots and lots of birthdays this week. So a big happy birthday to all of these people from us here at Theme Park Worldwide. We've got Sean, love the name, uh, Jamie, Melanie, uh, Malkina, James, Charlotte, Dan and Lewis. Happy birthday to all of you from Theme Park Worldwide. Thank you very much for watching this week's episode of Theme Park Worldwide, the show. Hope you've enjoyed it and I'll be back next Wednesday with another episode. Make sure you stay tuned this week for brand new vlogs from Alton Towers, Holy Park in Germany and of course Planet Coaster. It is coming this week, I do promise. Thank you very much for watching and that means it's time to cue those credits. Bye guys.